Today I'm going to be telling you about a corpus linguistics seminar which I developed and evaluated at Osnabrück University and which in fact I had the pleasure of teaching in this very building last semester. Before I start, just to let you know the slides are available for download. Um, so why design a corpus linguistics seminar in pre-service teacher training? Well evidently uh, the large gap that was identified back in 2004 between uh, the wealth of applied corpus linguistics research and teaching practice still exists and that's still very much the case at least in Germany and in particular in the school EFL context um, the need to convince practicing teachers to use corpora and concordances in the classroom that was identified by Römer back in 2006 is still one that is uh, very much valid and to address these issues the centrality of teacher training has been pointed out time and time again this was a project-based seminar designed for master students training to become English teachers, which really focuses on language teachers' needs. The institutional constraints were the following. I had 13 weekly sessions, that's one semester at a German university, and each session lasts 90 minutes. Usually there are something between 30 to 40 students, and this was happening at Osnabrück, which is in Lower Saxony, uh, where the wheel is on the map. The students are training to become English teachers for primary, secondary and vocational schools. The learning objectives uh, were really focused on understanding the value of using corpora in a classroom and on uh, being able to use a range of tools and methods um, in an autonomous manner. The focus was on design, designing corpus informed materials as the practical use of corpora in the classroom and on understanding how to integrate corpus work in the curriculum and in uh, lesson plans. A further aim was to enable uh, students to become uh, multipliers and to be able to teach others how to use corpora in the classroom. The seminar was designed as a project-based seminar with the aim of publishing a practical guide to using corpora for EFL teachers. And this is a guide that's to be published online, open access, so that teachers from across the world can uh, use it, draw inspiration from it, and learn how to use corpora for their own classroom practice. The process uh, was the following. We looked at the basics of corpus linguistics. So corpus linguistics was new to the vast majority of students. So we looked at different types of corpora, different methods, and different tools. Um, but we also really focused on the needs of teachers within the classroom. So um, they will need to be able to create material to assess students, to give feedback, and so on and so forth. And we looked at how these needs could be met using corpus linguistic methods. Uh, finally, students developed their own uh, resources. They worked on a chapter of the guide to be published, and students gave each other feedback on that project and on the chapter drafts. Um, they helped each other to improve their work and to uh, work towards a common publication. In practice, the process was the following. I started with an introduction to corpus linguistics, to various corpora, tools and methods. We then looked at material design and task design using some of these uh, corpus tools. And then about halfway through the semester, students presented their ideas um, to each other in a very short pitch presentation, and we discussed these ideas. In the next phase, students worked to improve their ideas, to continue to develop them, uh, always taking a problem-solving approach and before we reached the stage where they all had a chapter draft. And at the end of the semester, students peer-reviewed each other's chapters and gave each other feedback. The schedule was the following, but I won't go into details for now. Uh, we'll move on to the course evaluation. This was done with a pre-course survey and a post-course survey, which I conducted using the interface SOCI. I also looked at the results of the official university course evaluation and at the products that the students um, produced themselves. So the co-authored chapters and also the individual self-reflection statements. Starting with the pre-course survey and the reasons for choosing the course, um, students were very keen to find out about new methods of teaching English as a foreign language. And about two thirds were interested in finding out more about corpora and corpus linguistics. The survey enabled me to find out about their previous knowledge and 80% of students um, said that they had no idea what corpus linguistics was about uh, when they started the course. 
in a minute, I will show you some examples of students' work. So these are chapters to be published in the online guide. Here are some of the considerations that I gave students when working on their ideas. So it was important to have clear learning objectives for the learners, but also to meet specific teacher needs um, by constructing these materials. The chapters themselves needed to have very clear, easy to follow the instructions, and so many of them um, opted for screenshots, for arrows, and uh, for bullet point lists of instructions. It was important that they took into consideration uh, constraints such as time and resources, access to software, so to, as to ensure that other teachers would genuinely be able to follow their instructions to create their own materials. And it was important um, that they uh, go beyond simply creating a word list or a set of collocations, but really integrate those in tasks and uh, lessons. So here's an example from Sarah and Diana, who are training to become English teachers at primary school level. They looked at the topic of breakfast and came up with a list of collocations and phrases around the topic of breakfast using uh, the Spoken BNC 2014 on CQP web. And then they designed tasks uh, for learners to acquire these phrases and idioms on the topic of breakfast. And Zenko is training to become a teacher at secondary school level and she was interested in the topic of invitations. Um, to do that, she looked at the Corpus of American Soap Operas on EnglishCorpora.org, and her lesson is paper-based, data-driven learning. In Germany, teachers usually teach two subjects in schools, and Isabel's second subject is mathematics. She was interested to see how maths could be taught in bilingual settings, and in Germany that's usually uh, taught then in English. To do that, she compiled a corpus of maths tutorials from YouTube and used that data to extract collocations and phrases around the topic of fractions and created a lesson uh, that encourages students to create their own podcast or videos to teach fractions to other students. Simone is training to become an English teacher at vocational schools and her second subject is nursing. It's quite difficult to access data on hospital interactions and so she decided to build and exploit a corpus of the TV series Grey's Anatomy to do just that. And finally just one more example but there are many more that I could present. Uh, this is by Cara who's also training for uh, vocational schools. She actually created a virtual corpus based on the Wikipedia corpus on EnglishCorpora.org to create a word list of adjectives that can be used to describe skin and then she creates a lesson that will help students to describe a patient's skin in order to find the right treatment. The course is rated as um, very interesting and relevant and the subjective learning success was relatively high. The students also rated the quality of their final projects as very high. I was interested in particular to look at the level of difficulty, how that was perceived by the students. And indeed, about half the students said it was high, um, too high, and uh, only half said it was average. The scope of the course was also seen to be um, too high by a quarter of the students. And similarly, the pace of the course was judged um, by some students to be too high. So these are things to take into consideration future developments. The post-course survey uh, obviously shows that students uh, now know what course linguistics is about and uh, the majority consider course linguistics to be useful for language teachers but at the same time we can see that 30 percent of students um, agree that they will probably never use corpora again and 35 percent agree that data-driven learning does not suit many language learners. Um, equally, we find that um, about half the students uh, think that using corpora in the English classroom is very difficult and that creating uh, corpus in four materials is too time consuming. So this shows really mixed results that um, for some students it was a very positive experience and they created great projects, but is it going to be sustainable? Well, seemingly not for all students. The self-reflection statements were interesting to find out uh, what exactly was going on. 
And so one uh, common theme is uh, too many resources, too many corpora available. And I'm, one particular issue we had is that I, I tried to introduce students to Anconc and Lanxbox, but this was very difficult because we had problems installing the software on many students' computers. In the end, uh, we ended up giving up and going back to web-based interfaces. But this was a lot of frustration for students and something to avoid in the future. Here's a longer student reflection which summarizes quite well what was going on in particular for primary school teachers or future primary school teachers. Um, this particular student um, is not convinced that uh, corpora are going to be useful for her as a future primary school teacher, um, but um, she found it useful for her own language learning process. Um, so what are the main takeaway messages? The first thing is less is more. That means fewer tools, fewer resources, fewer corpora introduced in the sessions. In terms of tools, web-based only will be my choice in future because I simply don't have time to do one-to-one -one technical support on a weekly basis. And it's just very frustrating for students who have older computers on which um, they simply can't install um, newer software. I've also started creating short video tutorials on basic corpus functions because I've found that even if uh, I've demonstrated and the students have trialed out a function in class, a few weeks later, they're unsure as to where to click and what exactly um, it is they need to do. And in future, I'd like to focus more on materials design and less on course linguistics. It's also, I think, important to have more examples of good corpus informed materials for students um, to get a better idea of what's possible. Uh, for many, uh, there are so many options and so many possibilities that this actually um, hampered their creativity more than it helped. So what's next? Well, the best chapters from this seminar are going to be published in an open education resource, which uh, will be available online. We're currently working to revise them, edit them and format them. And the students who wrote the chapters are involved in that process. At the same time, I have developed and currently teaching a new seminar called Designing and Evaluating Materials for Language Teaching. Um, this is uh, designing corpus and form materials, but you can see that the focus is moving away from an overt focus on corpus linguistics and more on materials design. I'll be able to tell you whether this has been more or less successful uh, very soon. Due to the current situation, this was an online course. But actually, that's worked rather well since I was already working on making short video tutorials. So it's been a mixture of asynchronous and synchronous uh, elements. And if you'd like to uh, be updated as to uh, the publication of our guide, um, just send me an email. You can use the QR code to send me that email and uh, we'll let you know once we're so that far. But we're currently working on six chapters, which um, should be ready fairly soon. If you've got any questions or comments about this current um, seminar or any suggestions for future ones, then I'd be very interested to hear from you, either via email, on Twitter, um, or in the panel. A slides are available uh, for download. And as I say, if you're interested in the publication, then uh, let us know. Here are some of my references. And just to finish off, I'd like to say a big thank you to the organizers who've made this possible in spite of the current situation. Thank you.